Good afternoon everyone, I'm The Impressionist and welcome to a bit of a different video than I normally do. Today I'm going to show you guys how to make your own custom thumbnail, Photoshop quality, for completely free. You don't have to have Photoshop, you don't have to pay for any sort of software. I made the thumbnail on this video with the exact method that I'm about to show you. I'm actually about to show you me making that exact thumbnail, so I also got a new green screen, so that's going to be useful uh, when I get my new camera. Hopefully it takes in light better, because this one's been having a, a few issues with that, and uh, also the new one is going to be a lot more crisp, so hopefully uh, you guys won't see as bad images, you know. So first of all, what I did was I took a picture of myself. I had uh, uh, my wonderful mother take the picture for me, and uh, what I did was I, I went into this website right here. Actually, I actually think it's called Background Burner. The link to this website will be in the description, so you can get to it uh, with easy access. I have it bookmarked, so if you plan on using this website uh, very often in the future, I would suggest you do the same. So as you can see right now, I'm removing the rest of the background from the image, and this is what we have as our end product. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and finish this. Sometimes it'll take a while to load depending on the file size. Now, normally it will ask you to sign in to download, but uh, recently it's just been skipping that step for me. So if it does, just click the sign in button and then uh, pick Facebook or Google. It doesn't matter which one. Then back out and uh, it will instantly just allow you to download. So you don't need to log in at all. And so we open up this particular software that I use called Inkscape. Now, um, this is the software that I used in my 100 subscriber special stream where I showed you guys um, me making uh, the image for the, for the 100 subscriber as a gift. And as you can see, the image I'm using right now is, has absolutely no background. I, it, everything shows through perfectly fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my own template that I have that I use for all my thumbnails. It's got all the proper measurements and everything, so I'm, I always have the same uh, I guess measurements every time I make a thumbnail. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to where it says document properties uh, in the file uh, section to the top left and then we're going to hit border on top of drawing so that we can see uh, where the border is on top of where we've uh, put all of our images that are eventually going to probably take over that space. So we're going to go to resize page to content and resize uh, page to drawing or selection and here we have a perfect representation of where we'll be working. So now I'm just going to take my image and I'm going to put it where I'd like. This isn't necessarily where I, you know, keep it. Um, I end up making some more changes to it uh, later on. I am recording this afterwards. For you uh, in particular, you know, just figure out where you want it. Now right here you'll see that there's a clipping that, that happens, a, a bit of a snap that happens from corner to corner. Um, that is like no good uh, a lot of the times because sometimes you really need those precise things. So what you want to do is go up to the top right here and turn that off. So I'm just going to click on that, and uh, we'll just uh, go back down here. And as you can see, it is no longer, uh, it's no longer clipping. It's no longer uh, snapping to that corner. So I can feel free to move this as freely as I want. So after you've decided where you want it, um, if you're using an image of yourself, uh, for me uh, particularly, I like to do a lot of color editing because my skin looks a little bit orange because of the light that I have. It's not the best kind of light uh, for this sort of thing. I'm actually going to turn down the saturation and do a bit of color shift to make it truer to my actual skin tone. Now that that's done, I'm going to go even closer up and we're going to do some more color correction because I just had to lower the saturation a bit and uh, now some of the other colors have suffered a bit. So what I'm going to go in here and do is, as you can see, I'm going around the line of the red part of my hair and I'm going to give it just that you know, splash a color that it needs. Now I've done this in pretty much all of the thumbnails that have had my face in them. Uh, I just like to add that extra splash of color so, you know, it really catches people's eyes. Which is what you want when you're making a thumbnail, obviously, you want people to click on the video. Um, or you could just use boobs, you know, that's what most people do. But <laughs> we're, we're using shiny colors, you know. And I blurred it just a tiny bit so that it just kind of bleeds in a little more naturally and I lowered the opacity. And what that's going to do is give it enough of a highlight without being too obvious to be, you know, just, I guess, painful on the eyes. So I have just increased the density of, of my hair color drastically just by adding a film over my, my hair. And uh, it's it really just wakes up the picture a whole hell of a lot more. Another thing I like to do uh, is to really highlight the white of my eyes and uh, the brown color. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the line tool and just draw around the inside of where the whites of the eyes are. And um, I'm going to do the same thing I did with the hair. I'm going to uh, blur it and lower the opacity. I'm going to have to get rid of that black border there. But now all I have to do is just uh, 
bring it in just a little bit, and uh, it just wakes up the eyes a lot more and makes them look more healthy and just a ton better for the thumbnail. I'm going to do the same thing I did for the whites of the eyes. I'm going to go around the iris, and uh, since my irises are brown, that is going to be the color that I'm using. Again, I get rid of the stroke. You're not going to need that. Now, I kind of look like an alien here, but uh, I'm just going to go in and fix some of these angles and uh, try to make the area inside the circle a little bit wider, um, which you can do with the line edit tool, and then just go in and lower the opacity, and you have yourself some, some woken up eyes. And so I'm just going to copy and paste that over to the other side. And uh, it's basically just that easy. And then I'll copy and paste this one as well. It's going to need some altering as far as the shape goes, which is super easy to do. Just go in and change where all those, those edits you made are. And uh, just fill in your eye. Now, you don't have to do all of this, but this is what I choose to do while making my thumbnails. I feel like it just makes everything look a ton better. And you see, I've already woken the image up severely from what it used to look like. Now, whatever you do, uh, don't try to move the image underneath without grouping everything first because uh, you want to make sure that it's all one piece so that you can move it around all at the same time. Because uh, if you lose that, then uh, you're kind of screwed and you have to, you're going to have to undo and, um, or, or just take the tedious amount of time it's going to take to get everything exact again. And uh, at this point, I've decided that I didn't like uh, the size of the image beforehand, uh, and I'm changing that right now. I decided to go for more of an offset sort of, uh, I guess, presence in the thumbnail uh, because I wanted to give more room for the text on the left. Plus, I thought it framed everything a little bit better to have uh, my shoulder out in the right side. Now, usually what I will do is I'll put an outline around myself to help distinguish me um, or any other central object you're putting in your thumbnail um, just to kind of separate it, uh, give some good contrast from the background. We'll get to the background in a bit, but for right now, all you have to do is just lightly trace uh, the silhouette of whatever it is you're putting the, uh, the the shading behind. You don't even need to be that accurate. It's not that important. Uh, just make sure you have the general shape, and uh, you should be good uh, when the final product comes out. So this is going to appear over me, but uh, this is why uh, layers are such a good thing. Uh, it's going to hide my face here for a little bit. But um, now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go to uh, Google Images and I'm going to look up a nice background that I want to have in, uh, in my thumbnail. So I found the uh, background images that I liked and uh, I decided to choose this one because it was clean and uh, it had some, you know, some you know, lighting behind that setup. Obviously my setup doesn't look like this, but um, I just thought it'd be nice uh, to have there uh, in the background. It just it had the kind of color, uh, I guess, orientation that I, I liked and I just it just really caught my eye so I'm just gonna size it to how I want it and uh, I'm mo most importantly gonna be using the blur and uh, the reason why this looks so much different from how the thumbnail turned out is because uh, I haven't changed the color of the background yet so here I'm putting in the blur I'm doing the same thing for the background behind me and I'm gonna do some correction as far as shapes and angles go. And here you can see me getting rid of the stroke for the white background behind me. Once you have the background you want and your shading has been polished, now it's time to move on to what color you want. I ultimately ended up using green here, um, but you can see the creative process uh, was a bit tricky during this one because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Use text in your thumbnails, which not everybody does. Uh, I decided to for this video's uh, particular thumbnail. I wanted to make it extremely clear that it's possible to do professional looking images without Photoshop. And uh, I wanted to make it exceedingly clear that I do not use Photoshop in any of my thumbnails and uh, everything here is free. I want to make it very obvious that you yourself can do these things uh, without uh, too much effort and that your only limit is your imagination. Now I've got the basic idea that I want for this thumbnail, but the colors are still giving me a bit of an issue. I don't really know what I'm going to do yet, the font is still a mystery to me, and the colors are all over the place. So here's where you can see me doing the color shift for the background, and this is what gave me my idea to make everything green, which I think was a, a great creative choice in the long run. Green being my favorite color, I just couldn't say no. So now it was time to change the font to work better with the image. I decided to go with the font first, since I couldn't think of what I wanted for the colors. I found this font that I really liked, and I decided it was time to start thickening up uh, the font and uh, 
uh, giving it a shading and a background. Now normally I will use black squares in uh, during my thumbnail making process if I am using white text. I'll just go ahead here and uh, put this white text on the very top layer so that I can see it. And uh, as you can see, this makes it much easier to work with that stuff. So now I'm just copying, pasting over and over and over again and layering these things on top of each other to make this much thicker, uh, chunkier version of the text to then lay behind the initial one, uh, which is then going to create this effect of having an outline that will then help contrast the rest of the words in the foreground. So I've decided that uh, I like the way it looks for now, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move it to the image. Now this entire time that background area was meant to be black and I've changed this one to white as well. Since I have everything grouped up now I'm gonna bring it all down into the window and uh, you can see it's starting to look more and more like the finished product. So now I'm going and uh, doing a basic uh, background sort of shade uh, mist effect. Uh, I'm gonna turn up the blur really high on this one. Uh, basically just gonna give it this entire bit of text some accent so that it really comes out definitively from the, the rest of the background. I tried white and I didn't really like it since a lot of the background itself was white and I thought that some dark shading would help out the image quite a bit. I was playing around with some different background colors for a while till I finally decided on what I was gonna use. I liked the way the green looked because it had this nice relationship with the colors in the background. I decided I would just darken the color and go with that. Now from here I also decided that the white background needed to be thickened as well because it just looked way too thin and I thought it would look more welcoming and a bit friendlier if it just looked a bit more fluffy. So I decided to add a bit more mass in the back. After doing some minor adjustments to the color of the text, I just decided to change the red uh, shading behind myself uh, to a green color and it just was accented perfectly by the background so I decided to keep it. Now it's time to come up with the image for Photoshop, uh, their main logo, which I decided to import into my thumbnail. I found one that was square without a background and I copied and pasted it into Inkscape. And uh, I eventually put in some shading. I tried putting in a square first. It looked just too boxy so I ended up giving it a bit more contour. Uh, in the second iteration. Now it came time to make sure that the shading I wanted was big enough to uh, really satisfy the rest of the text. So after finishing the shading on the words, it was time to finish the shading for the Photoshop logo, and being the fact that it's just a simple square, uh, it wasn't that hard to do. I then bring my logo up to the forefront, which is where it ends up at the end of every thumbnail I make, and I blur the shading behind the Photoshop image. So another thing I wanted to do was make my shirt a little bit darker, considering the fact that it has all these weird, like, secondary colors in it that you can kind of see, like, it just, just doesn't look very flattering, so I decided to darken it and give the image a bit more contrast. Once I was done with the shape, I went in, filled it in, uh, did some blur, and lowered the opacity again, just like how we did with the rest of the picture. Now that it's at a hue that I like, I'll go in and tweak the shape so that it uh, doesn't overlap with the green or my skin. Now, I could have left the image here, but I didn't. I decided to go on to create a bit more shading in the bottom left corner, which I'll show you right now. So I grabbed the line tool and I made a basic shape of where I wanted the shading to be. I brought it just above the back layer, and uh, now we have this beautiful, gigantic black polygon in the background. Now all you have to do from here is just increase the blur, and you have this wonderful shading effect that just works with almost everything. Decided to move that a little bit more because I wanted to take, to take up a bit more of the bottom, and there you have it. That is the finished image, and you guys can do this. It takes absolutely no money at all. This is completely free. Both programs, one of them's a website, one of them's, uh, one of them's a program that you have to download. Um, you can get Inkscape completely free. I will send you the links to both the website and the installation for Inkscape. So anyway, I hope you guys got a lot from this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the final product. I hope you enjoyed, you know, seeing me work. I hope you enjoyed the fact that you can now make this stuff all on your own and you don't need to pay zip. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this really helped you, and I will see you guys in the next video. But until then, toodles! Thank you.